The work area for the machine should be near a compressor line. 80 to 90 PSI for the BioStar or 45 to 50 PSI for the MiniStar should be supplied through the air source. The power, air connection, and air adjustment dial are all located on the back of the machine. To connect the power, plug in the electrical line to the back of the machine. Then plug in the opposite end of the electrical line into the lab's three-pronged power source. A power strip with a surge protector is recommended. The air pressure hose is connected to the rib coupling on the back of the machine. Secure one end tightly to the machine by adjusting the hose clamp using a screwdriver. Rotate the screw clockwise to tighten. Then attach the opposite end of the pressure hose to the lab's air source. Secure hose in place using a hose clamp. An air filter is incorporated into the pressure hose to protect the inner components of the machine. Connect the hose to the machine and lab source making sure airflow arrow of filter is pointing towards the back of the machine. When lab pressure is turned on, check connections for leaks. Tighten hose clamps as needed. The air pressure dial of the MiniStar is located on the back of the machine. Before adjusting the pressure through this dial, press the bar button to display the machine's pressure setting. Standard operating pressure should be set at 3 to 3.2 bar. Keep pressing the bar button when adjusting pressure. To adjust the pressure, unlock the dial pulling out on the outer ring of the dial. Rotate the dial clockwise to increase pressure, counterclockwise to decrease pressure. Do not exceed the maximum pressure of 3.2 bar. Adjusting the pressure higher than 3.2 bar could activate the safety release valve when the chamber is pressurized. When reducing pressure, adjust below the desired setting, then slowly increase. Pellets are initially placed within the cup and front holding tray. Pour pellets in to half fill both. The Ministar S pellet drawer is located in the front of the machine. To remove, lift up and away from the machine. Pellets can be poured into the pellet cup. To reattach the drawer, align the block of the sliding plate with the inset on the drawer and push down in place. The block of the sliding plate must be properly aligned with the impression in the drawer. The sliding plate functions as a stop for pellets when the drawer is removed. Pellets may be used to prevent excess material stretch or to not allow material to form along unwanted model surfaces. To accomplish this, the pellet level within the cup is adjusted to elevate the model. Reference the termination area of the form material to the model to the rim of the cup. Pour the pellets from the pellet drawer around the model. Overfill the gap between the model and the cup's rim. With a 1 inch brush, level the pellets from the model to the rim of the cup. Excess pellets will be held in the channel around the cup. As needed, sweep excess pellets into the drawer on the front of the machine. Make sure there are no pellets resting on the rim of the cup when finished. The platform is used for soft and or thinner plastics less than or equal to one millimeter to be formed around the entire model. To prepare the platform for use, the pellet level in the cup must be below the inner lip. The cup's inner lip supports the platform, thus all pellets or other debris must be removed from this ledge for a flush fit. The platform is placed into the pellet cup to rest on the inner lip. The flat surface of the platform should face upward. 
The model with a flat trim base is placed on the center of the platform. In this application, the heel or back end of the model should be referenced towards the open chamber. The shorter the model height, the less material stretch or thinning will occur during the forming process. Before the heating cycle can begin, a material is selected and secured onto the pressure chamber. Remove the clamping ring from the chamber and center the disc over the black gasket. Replace the clamp over the chamber, offsetting the handle to the right. Center the clamping ring and rotate the handle to the left to tighten. Clamping ring handle and handle on chamber should be parallel to one another. Material heating times are entered by pressing the seconds plus or seconds minus button. Seconds will increase or decrease in five second intervals. Press and hold the button will rapidly move time to desired value. The heating cycle begins when the lamp is swung over the chamber. Warning beeps will sound with five seconds remaining, letting the user know the heating time is nearing its end. Then a continuous beep will identify the end of the cycle. At that time, swing the lamp to the back stop position and immediately begin the thermal forming process. Grab the chamber handle and rotate it over the model in or on the pellet cup or platform. Lock the chamber in place and enter the air pressure by rotating the handle on the right side of the machine to the front. A designated cooling time in seconds will automatically appear and start counting down. If this time is too short, the form material may remain under pressure until released by the user. Otherwise, allow time to terminate. If the user decides to terminate the forming or cooling process early, press and hold the air button for five seconds. This will cancel the countdown. Then press the air button again to release pressure. A series of beeps will identify the pressure molding and cooling cycle is complete. Evacuate the pressure by pressing the air button. Allow the pressure to completely drain before unlocking the chamber handle. Then unlock the clamping ring or frame holding the material to the chamber and swing open the chamber. Remove the material.